Now this video are for all you, not you Rolex, but Rolex in particular, the company. Now I recently tried to um, buy a purchase of Rolex, my first Rolex. I've had Britlands, you know, before. Um, so Rolex was gonna be my first considered luxury watch after having a good year as far as, you know, my business was concerned. Come to find out that um, Rolex has no watches in the store because of the gray market and gray market being what we in the street would consider mom and pop shops. So because they raised their prices, um, Rolex has slowed down the production of watches and aren't selling any to people. I, um, I think it's, personally, I think it's wrong business practice. I mean, who am I? I'm not Rolex. They've been around for over a hundred years plus, but it was a point where like, um, like I said, I had a good year as far as business. So I thank God, but I wanted to purchase my first Rolex, like my first Rolex. And, um, I was disappointed that, um, listen, I had, they told me I had to be a reoccurring customer in order to purchase one. And if not, then I could not receive one. It would be almost next to no, um, or no chance of me ever getting one unless I purchased one from Rolex, which I was trying to do. But at this point, because they were so upset with the great market or the mom and pop shops, so to speak, um, doubling prices on their watches that they kind of like fell back on selling to regular people who wanted a watch. Now, my understanding is that they say that, hey, listen, you can't get a watch unless, hey, listen, you've purchased watches from us before. So who's to say that somebody that's been coming to you and buying Rolex watches since they, what we consider in the street, a hookup because they know that they've done business. Like, listen, they could come in, you know, the AD calls them or the authorized dealer with, with that short for calls them and says, well, hey, you know what? I have a watch for you. I got two or three watches you asked about. You know, of course, I'm not saying that they are, but they have a better shot of receiving these watches than the person who actually is buying them to hustle them. You know, you get what I'm saying? So it's like those are at the first business. Like, hey, listen, if they know this going on, right, you come to Rolex and I'm like, OK, I know I bought two or three of them from you. And I, I know, listen, you know what? These things are going up. You know what? Let me come back and order them same three watches because I already have three. I get them and I could flip them in the street to the gray market. Now I'm with, I'm with everybody getting their money. But for me, like a person who's busted my ass a whole year round, you know, and I said, listen, you know what, let me treat myself to one. Can't go buy one because you feel that I have to be a person that's already bought one. Well, I wasn't, I was unable to purchase one before I am now. So now I would like one, but now I can't get one because now you're telling me that, hey, guess what? I have to be a person that's purchased from you before in order to be on that list in order to receive to receive one, which I think is unfair. But I mean, hey, that's how you do business. I don't think it's cool. But if it was something like that in the street, it'd be something different. But because, hey, listen, your company has been around 100 plus years and you established, I mean, you feel like that's cool business practice. But what I don't understand is if you're mad or you slow production down or you're limiting the amount of watches that are sold to people because of the gray market, then why do you sell used watches at the same prices that the gray market dealers do? So that makes you no different than the gray market dealers. Because I've gone in the store and I'm trying to get watches. And of course, again, Rolex has no watches for sale. Again, you, you, you put on a list, the ADs put you on the list and you have to wait. And your chances of getting one if you're not a reoccurring customer is next to none. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's bad. But then when you ask, look, OK, well, how much is a used one? This is coming from an authorized dealer or a Rolex dealer that they'll tell you, hey, listen, we are charging you great market prices. So that doesn't make you any different. It actually makes you worse because you're the company in which is slowing production down or limiting the amount of watches because of the great market dealers. So I don't know. I mean, is it me or am I, am I bugging or am I wrong? Like, I, I don't get it. So to this day, I don't. You know, so unfortunately, what I had to do, I had to go grab one from a gray market dealer because, again, I wanted one now. I don't want to wait another year just to see if they would even allow me or if Rolex would allow me to even get one because I hadn't purchased one before because I never I never was I was unable to purchase one before. You get what I'm saying? So I don't I don't believe that that business practice is right. I think like this, I say, listen, if Rolex put watches out and sold them at their regular price that that would mean that the gray market dealer would have to lower their price because guess what? You can't sell it for five, six thousand, ten thousand dollars more because guess what? Rolex got them on the shelf.
So that means, hey, guess what? Rolex, price, Rolex sales would increase. Green market dealers' price would come down. But that, I mean, I know. Listen, hey, listen, it's a hustle, because I'm, a, I'm at the end of the day, I'm a mom and pop businessman. You get what I'm saying? So I'm not for nobody taking their money, but I'm, just, you know, taking money away from them. But you can't, you can't conduct business Rolex the same way that a gray market dealer does, because that makes you know better than them if that's what you're trying to avoid or trying to keep people from being. Like you're dead wrong. Like I, I, that's just my belief. I just believe, like, hey, listen. Somebody like myself who wants to come in and purchase one first time, listen, I would like a Rolex. And you're telling me, you know, you know what? No, you can't purchase one because the people that have been doing business with us before come before you. And your chances may not of getting one may not come anytime soon. You know, what if it's like, hey, listen, I got an event. Like, I want to celebrate my one year, two years in, of having successful business. I want to get dressed. I would love a good watch to put on for my event. And guess what? You're telling me I can't purchase one because I've never purchased one before. I think that's kind of unfair. I think it's I think it's bad business practice. I think it's real bad. I think you should give those that want one for their first go around a shot because again if the person who has the hookup that's what we call the hookup basically because they've purchased watches doesn't it sound like they're more likely to buy the watches from you and sell them at the market up at the marked up price because they got the goods because they have access to it because they're on the list so guess what you know what i already got a daytona i got a submarine i got a deep sea i got a sky duel already you know what let me go to rolex and order the same watches and guess what let me flip them because guess what? I'll be first on the list because I'm already a reoccurring um, buyer from Rolex or an authorized dealer. My name is on that list. My name is on that system. But what about a small guy like me or any other person that wants to purchase one for themselves who's never had the chance of owning one but want one? So I don't really get, I don't really understand it, but I mean, I just, I think it's bad business practice. I just think, hey, listen, you know what? If the, the ADs are out there selling for this price, you know what? Let's just ramp up and get these these watches out to people who want them. So guess what? Then the AD, then the uh, great market dealers can't sell the watches at those prices. Now instead of you competing with the the great market dealer, the great market got to compete with you. So I don't know. I'm trying to figure it out. I was pretty good in math. I was pretty good. I just don't. I don't. I don't get it. I think it's unfair. You know. Now instead of Rolex getting my money, I went to a great market dealer. He got the money. I mean, it's cool because at the end of the day, I mean, listen, he has a family feed, he has bills to pay. That's just part of the game. But I would have preferred to walk into Rolex and spend my money. You know, I would definitely would have preferred that. I would have, I would like to have been serviced by AD. And not to say that the gray market dude that I bought mine from wasn't. He was super cool. He was pretty knowledgeable, very informative about, you know, about the, uh, the quality and the value of the watch. So I respected that. But again... I would have liked to, like many people, because I've seen them when I go into Rolex stores, I see people coming too. They're looking for a watch. They like a watch. But at the same time, I mean, hey, listen, they can't get on the list. When you put them on the list and they're telling you, the ADs are telling you, hey, you know what? <sighs> Man, did you buy from us before? You know what? Your chances of getting one this year, it's kind of next to none. So now you're left to go out there and deal with a gray market person. Because why would I give you a Rolex dealer? Why would I give you 15,000, 16, 20,000, 30,000 for a watch in your store when I know in your store it costs half of that or maybe a third of that? Why would I do that? Me personally, I'm a person from the street. I'm a hardworking individual from the street, but I would prefer to give my money, that kind of money to somebody on the street, a mom and pop shop, get in the money, then spend three times the amount of one of your watches in your retail space because I feel like I'm getting ripped off. See, when you deal with the gray market, at least you know what it is. You know what it is. You know it's a hustle. You know why you're paying this money. It's a hustle. It's they, They're hustling. You can't knock them. You have to respect that. But when you're a dealer and a person comes, okay, well, listen, you're not selling watches, but you have, um, you have used ones, but you want gray market value. So that makes you no different than a gray market dealer. It actually makes you worse it makes you worse. I don't know what the business tactic is. I, I don't get it. I don't get it. I, I'm, I'm like this. If it's something where like, yo, listen, you know what? It's kind of like a competition in the street. In a sense, it's like, hey, listen, I got watches. I can sell them.
because they're selling them for double the price, triple the price. You know what? Let's put these watches back on the shelf and get them to people who really want them. Because once you do that, guess what? The great market dealers got to drop their prices because now, guess what? They're in competition with you. You're not in competition with them. So, I mean, hey, I don't know. Again, I'm, hey, what do I know? I'm just a kid from the street, you know. You know, little college credits under my belt. I don't, I don't know anything. I'm in here making hats and cutting hair. But I just think that Rolex, you're wrong. I mean, you could always get back to me and let me know what you think or anybody out there. Let me know what you think. Again, like I said, I, I, I bust my ass. I work hard. Hey, listen, I wanted to treat myself. And they told me I couldn't. They said, basically, hey, listen, you think that I really want to wait a year to even see if they if I hear from anybody? Because I went in one place, listen, the lady literally had a book, like a notebook. And when I mean all the pages was damn near full, she had like maybe five pages left in this notebook, five pages. Every page was filled with names of people that wanted to watch. So just imagine how long I'd be waiting. So mind you, it was four pages left in her book. So imagine how long I'd be waiting. Like I said, what if I, hey, listen, I had a great year as far as business. I was blessed. You know, I got an event where I want to go out. I want to get dressed. And to complete my outfit, I would have liked to have had a good watch on my wrist. And guess what? I go in and roll like, tell me, basically, I'm not eligible because I've never owned a watch. I've never owned a watch from me. But, of course, I was never able to, until now, afford a Rolex watch. So, of course, I'm going to say, so, again, why would I spend my money you know, buying a used watch in your store, Rolex, right? Triple the price of used one because you don't have any new ones. When I know because you're the authorized dealer, you're an authorized Rolex dealer, that your price is at a certain point, but you're charging gray market value. I'd rather give it to the gray market dealer. Because again, like I said, I know that he's hustling. I know he got bills to pay. I know that's part of the game. That's part of the hustle. And that's where I had to spend my money, you know? But again, I respected it. I didn't like it, but I respected it because that's his hustle. But to go on the Rolex, this company that's supposed to be so reputable and, you know, long lasting, you know, credit and, you know, of quality watches and how everybody wants them, you know, or kind of denying people because of, you know, because grade the gray market. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I think it's like unfair. Again, I just like I think again, I think that those that got a long standing with you are more prone to take the watches and sell them because they have the advantage because they bought watches from you before. And they know that, hey, listen, they'll put me on this list. Guess what? I could buy another one. I could buy another one. I get another one, two more, flip those, come back, I'm on the list, boom. I'll, it's a reoccurring thing. So again, Rolex, you know. I mean, you could call me what you want, whatever the case is. But again, I think it's unfair. I've tried. I've tried. I've gone in like several stores. I was like, yo, put me on the list. One guy didn't even put me on the list. He just said, hey, listen, man, I'm going to tell you right now. If you haven't bought one, it don't even make sense. He was like, yo, take my business card and call me. Like, I'm supposed to call you and keep checking for what, a year, year and a half, two years for a watch. I'm like, come on, man, really? I'm really supposed to do that just in order to own one of your watches that I'll bust my ass a year, two years in business. Now I finally have some money saved, rocking next and just put, get a watch, you know? But you're gonna tell me because I'm not a long standing or I haven't purchased watches from you before. Well, no, because this is my first time and I'd like to be a member, but you're not letting me in or you're gonna make me wait even two or three more years. Who knows how long before I'm able to even get the watch I want? Because I don't wanna settle for what you have. I wanna settle for the what I want. So, I don't know. Y'all got to fix that. Y'all really have got to fix that. Because it's, it's looking bad out here. It's looking really bad. I mean, it's cool for the great market because they're the ones making the money. You guys aren't moving any product. You're moving one watch, two watches a week, three watches a week in the store. Who knows? Because I've been in them and I don't see, I've never seen anybody when I walk in talking about, can you put me on the list, walk out with a watch. I have, I have yet to see it. I'm in New York. I have yet to walk, and I've been in like stores in Long Island, um, Manhattan. I'm in Manhattan every week. I have yet to walk in one of the stores, which I'm in like every week. I just go just to check to see what's going on. You know, pray one day, hey, listen, I'll be walking. My phone rings and it's an AD. I just, hey, listen, maybe. But I, I've yet to see anybody walk out with a Rolex. I haven't seen anybody walk out. I'm sure they are, but I haven't seen like 
people really walking out with them like that at all. And the ones that I've seen, like, again, that are at um, great market value for used ones in the Rolex store are like, really? I was just on your website. The one watch says 9700 but now you got it at 20000 Like, come on. Come on, like, really? You want people to really say, hey, listen, you know, the majority of people, hardworking people to come in and be like, hey, listen, you know what? Oh, I know on the website it says 9700 but you got this used one for double. I mean, really? Come on. That, I mean, really, Rolex? That don't make you any better than the great market dudes that you're trying to keep from buying your watches to make their money. It makes you actually worse. Like, really worse. I don't care what anybody says. If it's some, if you want to keep it like on some street shit, I mean, not cursing like not the curse, but not, and I don't mean like on some volatile, but I mean, if you just want to keep it like man on man, business on business, it's like, hey, listen, I'm just here to purchase a watch. I'd like to purchase a watch. I'd like to be on your list of reoccurring um, customers and, you know, and purchaser buyers, whatever you like to call them. Um, and I'm not granted that because there are people ahead of me who've purchased watches before and I can't, I have to wait, I have to wait in order to celebrate my success because I'm not on that elite league or that elite list of people that have purchased a watch. I, hey, listen, this is this is my time and I wanted to get one. And unfortunately, I had to spend money in the gray market. But again, I respect the gray market dealers because that's their business. It is a hustle and I get it. But denying people the opportunity to own one of your quality watches is just absurd to me. And then you you turn around and tell people, hey, listen, this is a, this is a store where you can get a brand new one. But since we don't have any new ones, you can buy this used one for triple the price. Like, come on, really? I don't think it's cool. I think it's a bad business practice. I really do. I think it's a bad business practice. I think it's really bad. I mean, and again, I mean, hey. You don't gotta like it. I mean, it, I mean, the push comes to shove. Hey, listen, I'll I'll bite the bullet and I will go to the gray market dealer and buy my watch like a lot of people are doing right now because you guys like you Patek, you know, Audemars aren't putting watches out. I, 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 it's crazy that you guys sit back in your offices and think that it's cool or it's a good marketing strategy. I I think it's bad. I mean, me if it was some, I'd be like, you know what? Let's get these watches out to these customers. Let's get them these watches. So guess what? We're not competing with the gray market they're competing with us they're trying to catch up to us so i don't know i gotta fix that it's bad it's really bad i mean it's really bad that you guys are selling used watches in your stores when on your website it's marked at a lower price but you're ramping the prices for your used stuff just like the gray market dealers the ones that you're slowing it down and keeping you have no product in your stores because you claim that people who come in and buy now are the ones flipping the watches but you didn't stop to think that guess what the ones that have been buying watches from you are maybe the ones that's buying and flipping them you never thought you didn't stop to think that all you guys with all your your good rolex watches on and your good suits and all that because i got some good suits all right i got some good shoes i got i, I make good hats i make hats that will stop and think that, you know what, maybe, maybe we're wrong, you know, we got people coming to the store, because at the end of the day, it's a turnoff, because I went, and real quick before I go, I went into a store in Long Island, I go in there, it's me and maybe three other guys, you know, one black guy, you know, Asian dude and a white guy, so all three of us, we go in, and of course, we don't know each other, we're all going in, we're all looking for Rolexes, we go in there, so the young lady was really nice. I forget her name, but she was really, she was real nice, really nice. She took care of me, really, was really attentive. But to say that, listen, you know what? She just, she said, listen, I'm going to be honest with you. If you haven't purchased a watch before, she said, there's a chance you may not even get one. So you have to buy one from us in order to get on that list. Now think about this, right? She's telling me that I have to buy one in order to get on this list. So you want me to buy a used one because they didn't have any new ones for sale. You want to buy a used one at gray market value at 20 something thousand when online brand new is 9,700. It was a Submariner, right? For 9,700. But you're going to tell me you're going to give me a used one for 22,000. So like me, and the other two guys in there, we're like, whoa. I mean, we tried to watch on just to get a look of it. This is like, okay, listen, let me try this watch on. Let me try it on. Let me just see how it looks on wrist. And we all said like, like, whoa, that's ridiculous. 
why would I spend 20 something thousand in your store, an authorized dealer, a Rolex store, three times, almost two times the amount rather, for a used one when we know when we've looked online that out of your store, a brand new one costs 9,700. That's absurd, out of a store. Like again, if it was a great market dealer, okay, yeah, we know what it is. It is a hustle for them. But to walk into an authorized dealer, or authorized Rolex store, and you say, listen, we don't have any watches for sale for you. You have to get on this list. You have to purchase one right now. So you're gonna tell me, yeah, you gotta buy this used $20,000 watch that you want in order to get on a list for another watch that you may want. Or even the same watch that you just finished paying $20 for, you gotta get on the list to probably get it at retail later on, if they even call you, because you have, you're you not a previous buyer. I don't know, Rolex, man. It's bad business. AP, bad business. You know, Patek, bad business, man. I mean, hey, of course, you don't, you don't look at it like that because y'all making money. You still making money? What do you care? What do you care? But just know it's thousands of people out there or hundreds of people that would like their first chance of owning a Rolex and not for the purpose of flipping it either, just because they like to own one. Just to say that, you know what? Listen, I've celebrated a successful year, a successful month, whatever it may be. Yo, I'm going on an important dinner or I have an important business meeting. I'd like to be wearing that Rolex that I've always wanted. You know, it leaves a bad taste in some people's mouth. I know the day I was in that particular store that all three of us walked out like, damn, like really you, you charging me this amount of money? Well, for that amount of money, I might as well go to the gray market because you know what it is. You know that it's a hustle. You know, you know that it's a hustle. So you have to you respect it. But to respect the reputable company that's telling you, you know what, well, listen, we don't have any new watches for you. We got these used ones. At double the markup. Knowing that we only came in the store because online the price is whatever the price is. And it's not that. It's not great market value. It's not what the market value is for used watch or what's going on out there outside of your company. I think it's some BS, you know. I think it's unfair. I mean, but again, that's your business practices. All you companies, those are your business practices. I mean, it's cool. I mean, you wanted some type of exclusivity. I mean, hey, whatever. I can look in your face and tell you that it's wrong, whether it's through this video, camera, or whatever it is, but it's, I think that it's unfair. I mean, I would have liked to have owned one. I walk into the store. I'm not a, you know, I'm a hardworking person like a lot of other people out there. I just wanted to celebrate my successful, you know, um, year of my business by treating myself to one. I mean, that was it. I was just highly disappointed. I'm still disappointed because I'm still going in stores that I haven't been in and like, yo, put me on a list. You know, who knows? Maybe all them other 60, 70, 100 people, they might not, who knows, man, who knows? The sky might fall on them. And I mean, maybe the last one left and I might get one. But until then, I guess I'll just have to keep shopping the gray market. And Again, it's unfair. It's, it's a, it leaves a bad taste in my mouth. I don't know if anybody else feels that way, but I mean, hey, it is what it is. But I won't be denied one, whether it's through you or a great market. I will, I'll have it. I will have one some way or another. But yeah, Rolex. Yeah, nasty work. Nasty business. Nasty business. Nasty. That's all I got to say.